Hey guys, what's happening? So it's Memorial Day weekend 2023. And uh, <clears throat> actually for the last like, month or so, my Broncos started kind of developing a miss. And uh, the air date stalled out. It's done that a couple times, but it's... Yeah, I want to see if I can resolve the issue. Uh, I suspect that's wiring. Um, but let me show you. That's a 1966 Bronco. 351 Windsor. I noticed that when the things stall out, my MSD would lose power. And when I mess with these wires, it would uh, get better. But the only thing I really haven't cleaned up on this engine is really just this main wiring area here. Um, just because like, I, was, I was always adding things, changing fuel injection systems. So to keep on rewiring the system. <coughs> but it's kind of a mess. So I got wires going everywhere. Going to here, you know, the mega fuses, the ECU, the Holly HP fuel injection system. It was originally a Holly Terminator. That's my alternator, mega fuse. So I wanted a condenser with all this thing into one fuse panel and organize all the wires into one like, fuse panel block. Um, yeah, because the other day when it sold out, this thing wasn't getting powered. But when I would mess around with the wires, even though they feel tight, it would get better. But you can just see it's, this is a total mess. Look at that. So I have wires here, 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 so here, so it'd be nice if I could connect this into one uh, box here, let me show you what I got going here. So this thing actually wasn't really cheap, this was a, a $115 on Amazon, but it's a, uh, a fuse panel, uh, it has four like of the high, high amperage fuses, they're not called mega fuse, I can't remember what they're called, but the smaller than a mega fuse. Yeah, it says what this one over here. Oh, AMI mini fuse. Um, and then some like regular smaller fuses too. So some of like the less, like maybe the MSD box I can put on a smaller fuse. But I want to get a nice and clean fused grounds all in one spot. Um, that way it's easier to troubleshoot that I can label it. And I know what's what, you know, like what's going to where. Um, yeah, because dude, that, it's stalling out on the side of the rotor. When it starts to miss, it's a nightmare, Which, especially when you're in traffic. But I also got this kit too. This was a, well, this was 20 bucks. Put a link down below where I got this stuff, but it really shouldn't make a difference. It'll probably be, by the time we watch this video, it'll probably be gone. And this actually was a whole kit of these connectors. I mean, they don't, they look kind of, they're kind of cheap, but came with the shrink wrap, and uh, so it was like $41 for the the connectors, the heavy gauge wire cutters, which actually I wanted a pair of these anyways. Um, and then uh, the crimper tool. It's not really a great crimper tool, but um, it's not like a hydraulic crimper or anything like that. But um, all right, so I'm going to clean this up. I'm going to go back here and I'm going to remove all the old fuses, which I think were pretty expensive to buy individually. I'm going to fill, I'm going to weld all these holes shut. Respray it with um, what's it called? Uh, this rubberized coating stuff. So I'm gonna weld all the holes shut after I take all this stuff off. Let it dry and then I'll do the wiring tomorrow. But today I just want to do wire cleanup and figure out. Look at this. I mean, there's three different heavy gauge wires on the on the solenoid here. Um, yeah, nice clean fuse panel. Okay, so here's a closer look at the mess. So I do actually have a Volvo fan conversion. Uh, I think it's great. Never overheated once on low speed setting. Um, that's probably one of the best upgrades I ever did. Um, yeah, no cooling issues since that thing is in. But anyway, the wires aren't too thick. But I mean, look at this mess I'm dealing with. You know, it just makes it harder to troubleshoot. Like I had, a, I mean, I never had problems until this, you know started about a month ago. So never really had to deal with this. But yeah. So there's two big thick wires on the back right there. One is for an inverter. So in case I'm ever off camping, I can actually inflate like inflators, you know, um, to, you know it gives me 110 powers. But I also have an outlet in the back too, the, the Bronco. Um, the other one's for my uh, five channel amp. It's getting cleaner, but if you never watch my other video on the Volvo fan, so this is actually the relay. It's a two speed fan. 
and uh, so on low speed it more than cools the engine off but then I actually it's controlled by my uh, Holly the ECU turns on and off but then this extra black wire here like inside the car I have a toggle switch and that's like emergency that I got so in case in case this thing actually goes emergency I can just turn this on and go to high speed Guys, here at the old fuel box. Off. I mean, I've had this Bronco for over 20 years, so I've had four different fuel injection systems on here, four engines, no, three or four. I came up with three or four engines. Um, originally, I had a 289, um, but I've always been changing stuff, upgrading stuff. Um, so, yeah, there's holes everywhere, so I, I gotta. I gotta spend some time, weld those holes shut, and get this area prepped and cleaned. Yeah, redo the alternator wire here and just make it look uh, super clean. I had spent a lot of time, you know, trying to get all the audio noises figured out. So I actually have a ground strap going right from the case uh, just to make sure I got a connection between the block and it goes to this, which then goes to the battery. But then I had another strap which went to that one post on the battery, the round post, well, the, the bottom post or the screw in post going straight to the frame of the, of the Bronco and uh, yeah this solved all my like humming noises on my amp on my, on my radio just having good ground all right so I'm just kind of mocking it up here I think I want the high volts to come down this way or the high amperage and um, what's funny is I actually probably had like four or five different MSD boxes um, I made videos like over 10 years ago when I did a mega squirt conversion fuel injection and I had EDIS, you know, a distributed list ignition on this thing. It was a different engine though, different 351. Um, all right, so I was trying to get the positioning correct. All right, time to weld the holes. All right, so that's what I used to weld the holes. It's on Lincoln 320. I think I had this like 10 years probably. I'm not sure. It's not great. It's 110 meg. And then for backing, I use this little thing here. Uh, I've had this for a while, but basically it sits on the back of it, and, and you know, uh, well, it doesn't actually sit there and won't stick to it. So it kind of like that. You put your thing on it; it covers up the hole, so it gives you kind of a backing, so it won't just go straight through it. So it's much easier to weld with one of these things. All right, so I'm gonna come back with a flap disc. That's the first phase. Fix some holes. I don't know if I'm gonna fix these holes or not. I don't know. This is just from mounting different computers, ECUs. All my computer stuff is down here. All right, so for these ones, um, all my computer stuff is right behind it. I don't want to weld it. It's just going to melt the plastic. So what I might do is just put some tape, tape on it and then spray. I mean, this is and it's definitely not the right way to do it. I mean, all the same welding holes here. Um, because I don't feel like taking all this stuff down, it'd be take me hours and hours and hours. Um, the next time I change my computer out, I'll fill these holes out. Like I'm going to be upgrading from a Holy HP to a probably a Holy uh, Terminator um, with transmission control, just because I want uh, I want to use uh, right now. I'm actually running AOD, and I want to switch over to a, I have a 4 70 w in my garage with, with electronic transmission control. So probably doing that next year or two. All right, so I got to fix some stuff here. Still a hole there. Um, like I didn't get a good weld on it, but I think I'm gonna get my torch and heat this up so I can maybe scrape it off. I, mean, I got some thick layers on here. Um. All right. So one thing I noticed about this thing is it doesn't have lock washers on it. I mean, these are kind of like sort of like lock nuts, but I mean, it's way. I'm, so I'm putting actually lock washers on it. Um. I gotta run the alternator. Try to organize this, organize this as best as possible. Like I don't actually have to have the MSD box. I can. I actually designed it so I can take it out. So in case the thing failed or whatever on the trail, I could disconnect it from the coil. All right, so quick note about this rubber boots. I mean, these can be a positive or a negative. Um, yeah, they can keep the water out, but at the same time, they can trap and keep moisture in. You know, and you can't see if there's corrosion in there because it's covered. So. Hit or miss with those things. Yeah, I knew I was going to have to make some custom wires. That's why I got that kit. Uh, just because I got, the alternator wire is not long enough, so I'm going to put a new alternator wire on. 
I'm gonna wrap it up. Uh, yeah, that's actually a 3G alternator. Um, I rebuilt a few times actually. Um, I think I made a video about me rebuilding that thing actually. All right, so I gotta rewire that, clean it up. So before I was doing YouTube, this is probably like 15 years ago, um, I rewired this thing and uh, like the electrical system, like all the lights, the whole, I bought like a, like a wiring kit. This isn't for a Bronco specifically, but, um, but originally it came with a fusible link. So these things are horrible. I mean, it's basically like a fuse that will actually melt the wire at a certain amperage or current. So I'm gonna replace that and put that right into the fuse block. I have enough slack. All right, so I'm done for the day. I'll be back tomorrow, get some stuff. Um, Go to the store, get a, another battery cable to fish that thing. Um, get around our ground to here. Gonna need to get some more fuse. I'm gonna get a 175 amp uh, fuse for the alternator. I mean, I've seen them wiring it many, many different ways. I mean, sometimes it's not great having the alternator on the same bus, but you, maybe I'll run, if I have like any, if I make up any sort of noise, then I'm gonna um, I'll put it back on the uh, battery, but. I've actually wired many, many boats, and they're actually like this. I mean, the, they'll have the alternator fished right into the actual main uh, power bus, distribution bus, which actually has the stereo, all the gauges, pretty much everything in the boat. All right, there it is. Just got to put the cables on, and that's it. But, uh, yeah, now i got to go back and label it, you know, so I know what's what. So in case this thing fails, I'll know exactly where to look at, where to test. Um... All right, man, I, I don't know. I got probably about 12 hours in this, you know, maybe, or more. And probably $200, you know, which is the connectors and the, this thing was 115 These were like five for two. Um, extra wires. Yeah, probably around 200 bucks, probably. But, uh, all right, so hopefully, uh, you know, if you saw this on Amazon or whatever, uh, put a link down below if you want to see it or want to buy it, but... It's pretty good, you know? It's a 1966 Bronco. Uh, I mean, obviously I rewired the whole car and it's fuel injection. Uh, but yeah, this was really the kind of last area that I had to rewire, you know, and make it look clean. I just had been adding and subtracting, changing fuel injection systems. Um, you know, now it's just a lot cleaner now, so. All right, yeah, because I do actually have other fuse panels that are kind of in here, you know? Like, so I have them labeled, like one fuse panel goes to another fuse panel. Um, like the main fuse panel. But, alright guys, cool.